This presentation is about practical examples with SharePoint Business Intelligence. Primarily, the examples shown will be based off of SharePoint 2010, although I stress to say that, that everything I show you today is possible and, and very much doable in SharePoint 2007. It's just with SharePoint 2010, we've got a lot more out-of-the-box functionality, which makes it a little bit easier to demonstrate. But in 2007, with some tweaking, some third-party add-ins, we can pretty much accomplish everything I'm about to show you. My name is Andrew Levinsky. I'm a managing consultant with Catapult Systems Houston office. Uh, in, in my past life, I've also been a project manager, a project management trainer, an ITIL trainer. Uh, currently, I'm with the Enterprise Project Management Team, or EPM team, with Catapult, where I primarily do Microsoft Project Server implementations and Microsoft Project deployments. Uh, currently, I'm working in uh, gas pipeline construction, uh, but I've got a pretty wide background uh, working in all sorts of different industries of IT, construction, oil and gas, etc. My goal today is to demonstrate some, some practical examples of business intelligence, and my plan is to, to show you some, some pretty simple stuff, actually, uh, but I think it's powerful stuff. And I'm using all of that against a background of Project Server because, of course, that's what I know and love, and that's what I'm used to. And it's quite easy to generate some, some really effective BI information based off the data stored in Project Server. Now, in addition to these contact details, and I'll point out that I'm still working on uh, getting corporate approval to post my Blippi account. Uh, once I do get that posted, of course, you'll be all welcome to follow me on everything I purchase with the corporate credit card. In fact, I believe, based on latest news reports, that, that Blippi will even give you my credit card number. So I really encourage you to provide feedback and, and follow me and, and to, to call me, email me, and to follow us on our blog uh, to see what we're working on these days as part of the EPM team. The, the blog looks like this. We've got a lot of posts. In fact, lately I have been doing uh, quite a lot of business intelligence against project management. I'll point out that pretty much every demonstration I'm going to show you today is blogged. So if you're looking for uh, specific information of how to achieve any of the demonstrations I'm going to show you, it's all up there. In fact, uh, the last demonstration I'm going to, uh, the second to last demonstration I'm going to show today, which is the video demonstration, should be going up on our blog uh, at the end of this week. So that being said, what I'd like to focus now on is the Microsoft BI vision. And if you've actually attended the previous two workshops we did, uh, I think Scott Hayden did one and Neil Rani did another on Power Pivot, uh, you've probably already seen what the Microsoft BI vision is, but let's take a look at that. The Microsoft BI vision is improving organizations by providing business insights to all employees, leading to better, faster, more relevant decisions. Sounds good. What does that mean? Well, when I think of the Microsoft BI story, specifically when you're talking about 2010, the way I see it is it's like a big buffet. And uh, in this buffet, you've got a lot of different kinds of foods, basically every kind of food that you could possibly want or imagine. And not only do we have a wide variety of foods, but we've got a lot of it in terms of quantity. So what I'd like you to do is to just picture in your head that when you think of BI, it's an all-you-can-eat buffet. Everything you could possibly want is there. The trick is just figuring out how to get it. Now, to, to assist us in understanding the different tools and what tools we should use at which time, Microsoft has actually published a, a poster, and I don't know if you've seen the BI poster, but if you haven't, it probably behooves you to go out and download it. So get on your favorite search engine and type uh, Microsoft BI poster. You'll get something that looks like this, and this is a nice little poster that gives you a real summary of all the different BI offerings in 2010. It talks about Excel and Power Pivot, Excel Services, Video Services, Performance Point, uh, SSRS Report Builder. And it sums up, uh, what I really like is it starts giving you guidance as to when to use specific tools, which you see here. So I would encourage everyone to go download that. If you do need the link, of course, feel free to contact me. I'll be showing you my contact information at various times during this presentation. Uh, but just to get it up there for the first time, actually the second time, here it is. 
Okay, so we've covered the fact that the, the BI offerings in 2010 are, are like an all-you-can-eat buffet. Uh, this presentation is actually a stripped-down version of a presentation I gave at Microsoft Houston in January. And uh, that presentation, we focused on some of the, the key elements of reporting in SharePoint 2010. We talked about things like reporting services. And uh, if you haven't tried out Report Builder version 3, which was released a couple months ago, it's a free download. I would really encourage you to try it. I was playing with it the other day. And you get things like this, where you can build out-of-the-box maps with different layers of data. Uh, and it's actually relatively easy to do so. Uh, so I look forward to playing with that and posting my experiences on that uh, as, as, as the SharePoint 2010 stuff gets rolled out. But there's a lot of other stuff with Report Builder. Uh, unfortunately, given the time constraints of today's presentation, we will not be talking about Report Builder. Again, I would encourage you to, to follow along in our blog uh, if you do have questions about Report Builder, specifically Report Builder and, and Microsoft Project. Now, that's what we won't talk about today. What we will talk about today is Excel. And if you've seen Excel 2010, you'll note that there's a, a, a number of exciting new features in it. Uh, some of those features include things like spark lines, power pivots, uh, the slicer, which I think is kind of ominously named, and of course Excel Web Access. If you're not familiar with Sparkline, Sparkline looks something like this. If you look over here, uh, what I've got is a, a simple chart where I've been tracking trends on milestones. In this case, we're looking at the uh, variance for specific milestones that are very generally named Milestone 1, Milestone 2, Milestone 3. Uh, at four different reporting periods. So these each represent one status period. So what we can see is that the variance on milestone one has been trending up. Milestone two has been trending down. So it's actually trending ahead of schedule. Milestone three up. And the spark lines allow us to easily look at things and assess what the trend is. And I think that's pretty exciting. I'm curious to see different ways that people will be using these. You also, in Excel 2010, have power pivots. And if you haven't watched Anil Rani's uh, presentation from, from a couple weeks ago, I would encourage you to do so. Power pivot allows you to pull in uh, a lot of diverse enterprise repositories of data, pull it together into Excel into one simple reporting package. And if you look at this, you'll see here's a nice table. It looks just like an Excel interface. But if we look at the number of rows we've got here, how many rows do we have? Uh, in this case, we actually have 101 million rows. Power Pivot extends Excel to allow us to do all sorts of number crunching based on uh, relational databases, basically. So that's Excel. We're going to talk about Excel in just a second, and we'll demonstrate how to report, uh, author some reports in Excel and then to do some Excel web services. In addition to Excel, uh, what I'm very excited about is Visio, and especially Visio 2010. But in Visio, we're going to talk about how to develop a report such as this, where I can actually add geographic elements, I can map data specifically to stencils on Visio, and I can even publish that using Visio services. I'm actually quite excited about Visio. I think there's a lot of possibilities here. So we'll talk about that today, and actually we'll demonstrate some Visio. And then finally, we're going to talk about how SharePoint allows us to, to wrap everything up into one package. And in SharePoint 2010, of course, we've got the Business Intelligence Center. We've got our charts, web parts. And we've got performance points. Again, uh, due to time constraints, we will not be talking about performance points today. Uh, I think that's a topic that needs an entire presentation just to itself. But we will talk about something called uh, the REST API. And if you're not familiar with it, it is pretty exciting. It's something a lot of clients have been asking for. And it's something that's available in the 2007 offering. So that pretty much sums up what it is that we will be talking through today. Um, in a nutshell, what I'd like to do today is present uh, multiple examples of how to use authoring tools to generate practical reports. And these are all reports that I've seen customers request that are they're pretty common and, and hopefully are, are applicable to what you do every day. And I realize that we've got a pretty diverse crowd uh, that would be watching this webinar. And, and that's why I intentionally am focusing on projects which are pretty universal to, to any company. So hopefully we will not be focusing too much on something like oil and gas and construction. 
and we've got some examples that would be relevant to everyone. So back to our buffet slide, and let's get started. Let's talk about report authoring in Excel. Now, Excel is probably the most common BI tool out there. Uh, in 2010, I think it's really got some, some extra features that are useful, uh, specifically the new emphasis on Excel services, although I'll point out that Excel services really worked in 2007 as well. If you have the MOS version of SharePoint, uh, you can do that. So what I will show you now is how to author quick and dirty reports in Excel and how to publish that in Excel services. So let's start from scratch. Uh, let, let me open up some Excel here. Let me open up uh, Excel right here. So what I'm going to do now is uh, create a report that a lot of companies ask me for. This is pretty common. Uh, typically, the solution right now would be to generate this report in SQL reporting services. But what we have here is a project management methodology. Let's say that the company has standardized. We have the same set of six or seven milestones in every project. And what I would like to do is create a table with every project and then every milestone in every project and to compare the dates of those milestones. So to do that, I pull up Excel. And what I'm going to do now is just insert a pivot table. I'm going to use an external data source. I'm going to choose the connection. In this case, let's uh, look for a new one. I'm going to just going to type in the URL of our Microsoft Project Server instance. And once we pull up that instance, I should get the Business Intelligence Center. Within the Business Intelligence Center, I've got something called Data Connections. If you haven't played with data connections yet, you probably should. Uh, we're going to come back after this demo and take a look at our data connections. But in this case, what these are are prepackaged collection of data. So think of this as either the server admin or someone in IT or, or even someone in the business intelligence group has developed uh, an office data connector, which, which already comes plugged into different SQL databases. It's already pulling the data into one table. And we can, get, we can suck that data into Excel and digest it at our leisure. So in this case, I'm going to pull up my demo Office Data Connector. What that's going to do is actually go straight out to my SQL database through a, a connection file. And it's going to download some data. So here we have a number of fields. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put my project name in the column label. I'm going to make a filter of milestones. I'm going to put the names down in the rows. Uh, let's create a filter here, true. In this case, I don't want every single project I have. So in this case, I'm going to create a uh, label filter contains. So I only want my BO demo projects or BI demo projects of which I've got four. Uh, let's remove the grand totals because we really don't need those in this case. So far, so good. And now what I want to do is add the finish dates for the milestones for each of these projects. Uh, no big deal. Go to Options. Sorry. Sorry, it actually was an Options. What we had was an issue where I actually decreased the resolution. And what it did was I lost the menu item. So I was actually looking for Calculations, Fields, Items, and Sets, Calculated Field. Uh, let's call this our finish date. And we're going to say the formula equals task finish date. So again, just pulling the data from SQL. So of course, now what we have to do is format it. Let's set that as a date field. And now voila, what do I have? Uh, but a pivot table with each of the milestones and then all of my projects and then the key dates for each of those milestones. But we're not done yet, because we all know that the BI is not just creating numbers, but we want to create some, some exciting charts. And again, I'm using exciting in the most relative sense possible. So let's take this. Let's paste it down here. And now what I'm going to do is let's turn this into a chart. Uh, let's see here. Take our fields. Let's get rid of this field. And now what we're going to do is add another field. Let's add our finish variance for each of those milestones. So we're just going to put variance here and equals task 
same-ish variance. We have to divide by 8, just the way the numbers are stored. And now what I see are the respective variances for each of the milestones for those projects. Uh, I'm going to take that and generate a chart from it. So all we have to do is insert a uh, column chart. So far, so good. Let's pull that down here so we can see it better. And let's take that. Let's modify the axis. We're going to put that down there at the bottom. And voila, what do we have but a chart showing each of the milestones. And then I can see how each project is doing on the milestones. I can see that the blue project, or, or BI Demo 1, is running pretty late. BI Demo 2 and 3, not so bad. 4 is actually showing up as ahead of schedule in a couple places, as is 2. So now what I'm going to do is let's just take this. Let's uh, name the range. So I'm going to highlight this, hit Control 3 or F3. And I'm going to call this range Milestones. And I'm doing this because we're going to come back to it for the REST API demo. Now, in the real world, you would probably be creating a dynamic range. We don't have time for that today, but you get the idea. I'm also going to take this chart, and I'm going to name it. Let's see here. Click on the chart. And we will name it. Sorry, again, we have run afoul of the decrease resolution. We're going to name it. MS chart or milestone chart. Excellent. Now to save this, I actually have a couple options. I'm going to go backstage. Oh, sorry, I'm going to go backstage. And now what I'm going to do is I want to send this to SharePoint or save it to SharePoint, as you will. And in this case, I'm going to save it to my BI center. We're going to call it milestones which I've already posted, so this way we're just going to post over what I've already done. I've got various options as to what I can post, uh, which worksheets, etc. And now once that's done, it should open up into a nice Excel services page. So here we've got the entire report that we just created. Pulling from SQL in Excel, which is an interface that, of course, everyone is, is familiar and comfortable with. And now I've got this entire report in my browser. I can manipulate it. I can control things. I can filter and sort. I can uh, control it just like I would in Excel. So let's close that out. If we will, we're going to come back to that in just a little bit. Let's go back to our PowerPoint presentation then. And let's talk about ODC files for a second. And actually, tell you what, why don't we actually look at our ODC files. So let's go into SharePoint for a second. So in this case, Project Server actually comes with a business intelligence center, which is already preloaded with a fair amount of data. In this case, we have a number of data connections, which are relatively easy to create. And each of these represents a set of data. Or actually, it represents the connection file that points to a SQL repository, including a set of data. It's quite easy to develop these Office data connections. Uh, in fact, let me show you an example of them. If I may, here we've got a, a very simple example of an Office data connector. In this case, we've got all of our, our connection data up here. And at the end of the day, it's just telling us it's going to go to a table called MSP EPM resource user view within the project server database. Now, if we want to get slightly more complex with our ODC files, we can do something like this, where it's actually going out to multiple tables collecting the, the various fields that we specify. And this is, by the way, how we can control some of the security. I, obviously, we don't want to give everyone access to all the data in Excel. But here, we can actually control what data they have access to. And then we can point them to a specific ODC, and that allows us to trim it. And in this case, we're actually joining two tables. So let me show you where we've got that here. We are uh, joining our EPM task, or task level data, with our project level data right here, EPM project user view. So this is just one example of how you can pull multiple tables together. I'm going to show you how that would be actually implemented in just a little bit. 
Let's zoom back out if we could. So that's it for Excel Web Services. You can do a lot of interesting things with these. You can create all sorts of dashboards. You can actually surface a lot of that into performance points. And I think this gives a lot of flexibility and increased user satisfaction, let's say, with the business intelligence offerings out of Microsoft. So that's it for Excel. Let's talk about Visio now. So at Visio, it, it pretty much works the same way. I, I can open up Visio, which I think is probably one of the most underreported or underutilized reporting tool in the Microsoft sphere. And I can do all sorts of reports with Visio. In fact, uh, Visio 2010 has increased support for multi-touch uh, user interfaces, i.e. on a tablet PC, which as I see it brings us one step closer to the intersection of, of corporate reporting and finger painting, which is very exciting for me. But in Visio, again, we, we take our source data, which might reside in an ODC file or in SQL, and we surface that in Visio, and then we report on that with Visio services. We can do any number of different uh, examples. Here we've got a collection of project type diagrams that people have created in Visio. Uh, this is the project timeline, which I've actually blogged about how you can actually create a timeline view of a project and link it dynamically back to the server. And the classic example that we've seen in a lot of the BI demos is the fault tree analysis, which for me, coming from an IT service management background, is pretty exciting that you can actually do all sorts of things in terms of service management, service monitoring, just through Visio. So that being said, let me show you real quickly how to create a nice little report in Visio. Uh, this is a report based off of a couple examples I've seen. And what we're going to do is create a map of project server data. So let's take a look at this real quickly. Let's go up to project web access. So what we have here in project server is I've created a, a set of projects. And each of these projects represents an oil field well. And in this case, we've got eight wells. So I've got well two, basically one through eight. Now. To maintain each well, I've got a drilling rig, which is uh, almost like a, a four to five story building on wheels that needs to come to every well and turn and drill. And this causes massive disruption to the work that's going on at any well at any time. So it's important to, to make sure that we, we keep a tight schedule of when the rig is going to show up. Additionally, a rig is a very, very expensive piece of equipment. So we want to maximize our use of the rig. So in this case, what I've done is I've taken all these projects, I've created a bunch of tasks, I've assigned the rig, and then I've leveled it. So it's a classic resource constraint scenario where I'm maximizing the use of one resource, uh, trying to, to, to alleviate the bottleneck, if you will, of that one resource. So how are we going to report on that? How do we want to take that data and put it in an interface that is easy to use, is intuitive, that people will be comfortable looking at. What we're going to do is, let's just open up Visio here. We're going to create a blank drawing. And let's just modify that if we will. Let's turn off auto size. Let's change the orientation to landscape. And the first thing I'm going to do is let's insert a map of our target area. In this case, we're going to use a map of Prudhoe Bay. Uh, Prudhoe Bay is uh, the oil field in North Alaska just off the Beaufort Sea. So let's see, Visio demo. And we've got a picture of Prudo, helpfully provided by Bing. And let's crop that if we could. And now we've got a nice background. The, uh, I don't know what you call that, orange square arrow thing representing Dead Horse. If anyone watches uh, Ice Road Truckers on the Discovery Channel, uh, this is pretty much their area. So let's grab some stencils here. I've actually created some stencils already. Uh, these are stencils that I created by using images from a site called iStockPhotos.com, where you can basically license photos. Then I took a free photo editing software, uh, removed the background, and now I can use them as Visio stencils. So 
So we're going to put a couple offshore platforms right out here in Prudhoe Bay. This is where you'd be driving on the ice road in the winter. And let's take a couple wellheads. So these are some wellheads. Now you'll see with the wellheads, let me zoom in here, that I've actually got dates associated with them. And what that is is just a default date, uh, 429-2011. Soon what we're going to do is take our server data and we're going to surface the server data and that's going to override those dates. So let's show you what that looks like. So now what I'm going to do is go to data and let's link some data to shapes. I'm going to just go straight to SQL, although I could go to my office data connection if I wanted to that I've already created. Type in my SQL server name. It's going to ask me which table I want. I'm going to pull up the project table. Uh, good, good, good. Sure. And now let's select columns. Now we don't need to have every column. Let's uh, let's uncheck all. We want the project name. And let's go down here. We want, let's see here. There we are. We want our drilling start date. So we want to know when the rig is going to visit each well. And we can actually throw some other bits of data on there. We can look at how many tasks are still open, how much of the maintenance backlog we have on each of the uh, wellheads, and then how many tasks we have actually closed from our maintenance backlog. So I've got those, those fields. And now we need to filter our data. I'm just going to create a custom filter based off of our department. Project departments is equal to drilling. This is going to pull up all of my drilling projects. Looks good. Going to hit OK. It's asking for a uh, primary key. Let's go here. Project name and finish. So now what I've got are the drilling dates for each of the projects. And this is dynamically updated from project server. All I have to do is take these projects and map them to my wells. So let's say I'm going to take, uh, this is well one, let's put well seven over here. Uh, let's say well four goes here, well three, and finally well six. So what you see now are the dates uh, that the rig is going to show up. Now in this case, I think somehow we got 7.23.2010. Probably a glitch in how I set up the original project and project server, but we're not going to worry about that too much. Now, in addition to having this nice report, and let's let's kill this window here, and actually let's kill this window here. What I can also do is I can show shape data. So in this case, I can click, and what you'll see is as I'm clicking the dates change, the data changes, because it's just a different report to show different data from the server based on what I've selected up there. Now, what I'd like to say is that this section right here is almost can be treated as the space for rent, because honestly, what you can do here is put any sort of data you would like. You know, we talked about the ODC files that I can actually combine multiple database repositories into a single ODC file. This would be a perfect case. I could actually go out and pull my well production system with its data in some sort of SQL repository, merge that with my Microsoft Project Server data, and now what I've got is all the data about a specific well, uh, perhaps contact information for the relevant personnel, and all I, all I need to do to navigate that is to just click around within my Visio diagram. Now, just like Excel, Visio 2010 allows me to publish to Visio services. In this case, I can save it and save to SharePoint, in which case I can actually save it as a VDW, a Visio drawing for web. Unfortunately, at this point, uh, I'm going to have to fall on screenshots to show you what that looks like uh, because I'm still in a beta environment of SharePoint and Visio right here on my laptop right now is the, the release to market version or the release candidate. And 
the release candidate does not play nicely with SharePoint beta. So what that, what that looks like when you publish it is this. Let's take a look. It looks pretty much just like the Visio diagram. But in SharePoint, one, of course, I don't need Visio to access it. And two, just like on the Visio diagram, I've got access to my shape window. So as I click around on the different wellheads, it will expose different data in that shape window. To me, that's pretty exciting. To me, I think that there's a lot of potential in Visio uh, for reports, specifically Visio for reports and in Visio Web Services. And, and especially now that users don't have to have a full license to Visio to see that. So we've talked about Excel. We've talked about Visio. To wrap things up, let's talk about SharePoint and how SharePoint ties everything together, allows us to tie everything together. And for that, I would like to talk about the REST API. Now, there, of course, there's a lot of examples, a lot of ways we could talk about how SharePoint ties everything together. But I found the REST API to be a nice, succinct way of uh, pointing out the power of SharePoint 2010. As I mentioned at the beginning of this presentation, the REST API is available in 2007. You have to go to, I believe it's, it's the folks from Bamboo uh, have released a third-party add-in, which is a free download, which can be implemented in SharePoint 2007. So what is the REST API? Well, what happened is, as you may remember back in Excel when we were doing our Excel demo, we saved the Excel file to SharePoint. We, we, we named it with a range. We named the chart MS chart. And what we can do if we know those names is we can actually generate some URLs from them. So let's take a look at this. So if we know the right syntax, what we would see is that we actually have URLs. In this case, we're looking for our milestones.xlsx file. And specifically, we're looking for a chart called MS chart. And if we take that URL, we can paste it into our browser. And that chart comes up. Now, what can we do with this? Well, let's take a look at some of the, the options. One, let's say I created a project site, or not a project site, I created a site for the PMO. And this contains a monthly report of all the data that our PMO is tracking. So on this site, I put a nice Visio web part or a Visio viewer web part. And what you can see here is that I can navigate this just like in Visio. Uh, I can expose the shapes page. Well, I could if it wasn't off the page right now. Let's see if I can get it to show up. No. Uh, unfortunately, it's because I changed the resolution. It looks like it's right off here to the right. And this is, again, this is SharePoint beta. I'm hoping that this was fixed in uh, the release candidate. But also up here, I've got a content editor web part. So let's just edit this web part for a second. And let's say that, uh, you know, um, uh, below is our monthly project milestone variance report. And all I have to do is insert insert a picture from an address. I'm going to paste our URL in there. And now I'm going to let's see, stop editing. Let's take a look at what our page looks like now. There we are. So we've, we've put our chart in there. It's dynamic. It's updated based on our Excel services. This, by the way, has expanded the column with the web part. So now I can get my Shapes button to show up. And what you see is, as I click around, let's see, there we are. Get that compressed. You'll see the different date showing up. Very easy to use interface. So that's pretty exciting. I can take the REST API, I can drop that chart anywhere I want. But I think even more exciting than that is now in Word, let's see what the ramifications of that are. So let's say I create status report. So this is our monthly PMO status report. 
All I have to do is go to insert, take a quick part, field, links and references, include picture, paste the URL, data not stored with document, which means that the chart will have to be refreshed every time that you open it. And voila, we've got dynamic graphics in a Word document. This is something that a lot of my clients have asked for at various points. Now, we probably also want to include the data behind the chart. So let's go get the URL for our milestones range. If you remember, we were talking about how we named ranges. Ideally, we should be naming them dynamic names. Let's go back into our Word document, sorry. And let's insert a quick part field. In this case, we're going to include text. Let's paste it, hit OK. And boom, we've got all of the variances for the project pulled from our Excel report. So not only can we generate these, these interesting, exciting reports, but we can then decompose them into various parts. We can reuse those parts at various places throughout the SharePoint, throughout Microsoft Office. This is pretty exciting. I think, and, and this is what I think a lot of clients will get a lot of value from. So that pretty much covers what I wanted to talk about today, and, and that is all the different reporting elements within the SharePoint 2010 stack, which are, again, available in 2007. Uh, we talked about Excel, Visio, and then how SharePoint brings it all together. And what I'd like to leave you with is, again, this concept that, that there's a lot in the BI stack, and there's a lot in here that is accessible to pretty much any user in the system. It's all self-serve. It's, it's eat till you drop. There's a lot of offerings here, and there's a lot of data potential. I'd like to thank you all for attending, remind you that, that this presentation was sponsored by Catapult Systems. We are 100% Microsoft-focused. We do pretty much the entire Microsoft stack with the exception of, of the Dynamics product. We're one of only 35 nationally managed partners in the U.S. And if you have any further questions or, or queries or feedback, please feel free to contact me at the information here. I thank you for attending, and I look forward to, to, to meeting you all at future events.